Hello everyone and welcome back to Cheesy Code. So in this tutorial we are going to discuss about exception handling in C Sharp. What are the exceptions, how they are handled and we will also discuss how to suppress them so that the user doesn't get to see the actual exception. So let's get started. So these are the following topics that we are going to discuss. First of all we are going to discuss what is an exception. Then we will learn about the different type of exceptions. Then we will see what happens in the case of unhandled exception. If we are not handling any exception at all then what happens to the application. Then we will see what is application underscore error method. Then we will see some examples to discuss about the exception handling in C Sharp. So let's first discuss about the exception. What is it? So in context of C Sharp, if an application is running and while it is running an error occurs in the application, the .NET framework raises an exception and it breaks the execution of the code. So this raised exception contains all the information about the error, at which line of code the error occurred, which method was executing that line of code, what are the parameters being transferred to the method. All this information is present in the exception that is being raised by the .NET framework. And we in the code get an object of the exception and that object is of system.exception class. I'll be showing you shortly how exactly the exception occurs. Now let's have a look at the type of exceptions that we can have in the .NET framework, the basic ones. So these are the common exceptions that can occur in .NET Framework. So these are the exceptions, like this arithmetic exception, it can occur when we try to divide some number with zero. And then there's index out of range exception. This occurs when in an array we are trying to get a value at a certain index, which doesn't exist. In that case, we get this error. Then there's invalid cast exception, like we try to cast string into integer, then this error is raised. And similarly, there are different type of errors. And we have this description over here. So these are the common exceptions that occur in .NET Framework. Now we will see what happens in case we don't handle exceptions, like there is no exception handling at all. In that case, I have this basic ASP.NET application and in this page load, I am just trying to parse a string value into integer. So I am going to run this application and see what happens. Now you can see that an exception is raised by the .NET Framework and it is written that the error is format exception and it was unhandled by the user code. So in case of unhandled exception, that's what user going to see. So to prevent this situation, we use exception handling. Now what is application underscore error? So in our web application, we have this global.asx file. In this file, we can specify this application underscore error method. The code inside in this particular method is always called when there is an unhandled exception. So like in our case, if I set up a breakpoint over here and I run this application again. Now here as the exception is raised, now I'll click continue. Now here as I can see, my application underscore error method is being called. Now inside this method, I can get the exact exception which was occurred in my code using error. It brings me the exact error because of which I am here in the application underscore error method and I can get all the information regarding this exception inside this ex object. This is my exception object and this object is of system.exception class. So here I can see that there's inner exception which tells me input string was not in correct format. Now from here on I can log this error into db and redirect the user to the specific page like my custom error page so that my user doesn't get to see that particular yellow page which occurs in case of unhandled exception. So that's how we can use application underscore error method to give user a better experience. Now coming back to our topics. So how exactly we can handle exceptions? If there is an raised exception, then how do we handle it? So in .NET, we have try catch blocks. Let me show you how to use them. So it is something like this. We have a try block. Then we have a catch block. Inside the try block, we write all the code that we want to execute. Like in our case, I'm putting down this particular line of code over here inside the try. Now in catch block, catch block is basically catching up an exception. So we have to specify the type of exception. Like I'm writing here exception, then a name of the variable in which I will get the exception. So here, if any error occurs inside the try block, it will be catched inside this block. 
Now if I run this application, now you can see that the page is loaded correctly. In this case, the exception was raised, but it was suppressed because we have this catch block. Now here I can write, I can write anything I want to do with this error, like I can log it into the DB or I can do something about it or I just can suppress it so that the actual user doesn't get to see anything about this error. Now here we have only try and catch blocks. We can have multiple catch blocks present corresponding to a try block. Like I can have another catch block which is taking care of another specific exception. Like we have format exception. We can have as many as catch blocks as we want. So now if any error occurs inside this try block and it matches any of these exceptions, the code inside the catch block will be executed and the code inside the other catch blocks will not be executed. I'll be showing you the working example of all this in a while. Then there is a finally block. Now whatever happens inside the try and catch blocks, the code inside the finally block is always executed. This is helpful when we want to do something even in the case of exception occurs, like we want to close the connection to the DB, even if the exception occurs. In that case, we can use the finally block. So for now, I'm just removing all this code. Now I have a method created with the name as divide. It divides the two numbers and it writes the response onto the web page. And in case of any exception, it writes the error. In this finally block, I'm just writing a finally statement just to show you that this line is executed in any of the cases. So for starting, I'm dividing 100 by 10. Let's see what's the response on my web page. So here you can see that the result is 10 and then there is finally statement. So here you can see that in my try block, I have written this response.write result and as there was no exception occurred, so this message was not printed, then there was finally block and it always get executed. I'm now trying to divide 100 by 0. Now let's see the output. See the statement is now changed. Error attempted to divide by 0. My code I can see that if the error occurred on this line, the execution broke and then it reaches the catch block. And in the catch block, I'm actually printing out the error message that we have. And then there is finally statement. So now you have seen that the code inside the finally block is always executed even if error occurs or not. Now let me have another catch block. Now I've changed the catch blocks. One is the specific error I might get and one is the generic error. So I'm going to run this code. Now here you can see that this line is being printed. That means if I get any specific error in the catch block, then the code inside other catch blocks will not be executed. So here in my case, if the divide by zero exception occurred, then this line was executed and this line was not executed. So that's how we can choose different line of code behavior for the different exception occurred. Now let me show you another thing. I've changed this to 10. Now here I'm just checking if number 2 equals to equals to 10 and I'm gonna throw a generic exception. And I'm going to write a message. Now if I'm going to run this, you can see generic error is now printed. Because here I have raised a normal exception, so this catch block was not executed and this generic exception is raised. So this way you can raise your own exception if you want to on the basis of your code. I'm going to remove this. Now I have a try catch block over here. What if I have a try catch block over here as well? Now other way of handling an exception is if I have an exception inside this block I will throw the exception from here I will do I will either log this error into the DB or do something about it then I will throw this error and then this error would be catched by this catch block so I'm going to show you how just let me change the value to zero now I've 
Now I've set up a breakpoint over here to see the exception. Now when I ran this from divide function, the exception was raised here, then it was sketched over here. Then after this line of code, we thrown this error to this sketch block. That the same error is now catched by this block. So I thrown this error from here to here. This way you can handle exception at a single place. So you need not to write code inside every catch block. You just throw the exception and it get it catched in a single place. So it's all up to you. So I hope I gave you a brief idea about the exception handling in C Sharp, how you can do it. Try it out yourself. Let us know if you have any concern about it. You are facing any problem, let us know. For more C Sharp related topics, you can visit our site cheesycode.com. We have C Sharp tutorial series over here and we keep adding on to this series, so stay tuned. And if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel. There are other videos as well which you will like. So thank you for watching and stay tuned to Cheesy Code.